How did the Mazda factory, only three miles from the epicenter of the atomic bomb, survive? What's the difference between a standard engine and a rotary engine? And why is the rotary engine doomed to fail? Find out the answers to these questions and more as we continue our drive through Mazda's bumpy history. When the dust settles on Hiroshima, over 85,000 people are dead and this number will rise to 150,000 by the end of 1945 due to the after effects of radiation. In total, the city loses about one third of its population. It's reduced to rubble and ash. Three days later, a second bomb is dropped on Nagasaki. Then Japan surrenders and the war is over. Both Jujiro and his driver survived the blast and three miles away from the epicenter, the Toyo Kogio factory is virtually undamaged. That is because there is a mountain between the city and the factory. It absorbs the blast impact and protects the factories from the bomb. Toyo Kogio plays a huge part in rebuilding the city of Hiroshima from the ruins. They immediately began distributing medical supplies and setting up centers for families to reunite. The plant opens its doors to victims of the blast as a temporary shelter. Both the local broadcaster and local government move onto its premises where they stay for one year. The company knows their motorized three-wheel truck, the Mazda Go, will be helpful to the nation that needs to start moving again. Within four months, they resume truck production at the plant. The biggest holdup is the lack of tires. The Mazda Go begins its slow evolution into a real truck. It gets a windscreen and headlights, which no doubt is greatly welcomed by delivery men. No more bugs in their teeth. It also gets a real steering wheel. A young engineer, Kenichi Yamamoto, is largely responsible for the new designs. He returns to Hiroshima shortly after the bomb claims the lives of his sister and father. He finds work at the Toyo Kojio's transmission factory. His ability is soon noticed and he is promoted to engineering position. In fact, he will go on to become the president of the company and be responsible for the famed rotary engine. But we are not there yet. Jujiro hands the running of the company over to Suniji Masuda, his adopted son-in-law. Jujiro dies on March 27, 1952 at the age of 76. Hiroshima honors his contributions to its city with a bronze statue that is erected in Hiyama Park. Suniji is a forward-thinking man. He is credited with introducing the first computer to Hiroshima at a time when computer companies thought the world only needed five computers. Now it's 1959. The evolution of the Mazda Go has culminated in its successor, the K360. Well, actually, it is a successor to the Mazda Go in spirit only because it has three wheels and a motorbike engine. In all other ways, it is completely different. It's a truck rather than a rickshaw. It's got actual doors an actual steering wheel, a headrest, a heater, space for two passengers, and most importantly, it is enclosed, so no more getting rained on. Within a year, the R360 is released. It's Mazda's first automobile. It's a two-door, four-seat coupe capable of 52 miles an hour. It features a four-speed manual or two-speed automatic transmission. Right from the start, Mazda established itself as a manufacturer of stylish small cars that are fun to drive. The R360 is a hit in Japan. It sells an incredible 4,500 units on the day of its launch. By the end of the year, it takes nearly two-thirds of the so-called key segment. This is essentially a Japanese microcar, the smallest highway legal passenger car. Mazda's cars grow in line with the Japanese economy. As people can afford larger cars, Mazda delivers the Familia, a small family car. These cars are manufactured at the Hiroshima plant and are also assembled from kits around the world in places like New Zealand, Taiwan, South Africa, and Colombia. Some places keep manufacturing them long after the line is discontinued in Japan. Now it's time for something bigger. Suniji is looking for something that will make the company different from other Japanese car manufacturers. It's the middle of 1961, just a year after launching the R360. Suniji comes across a rotary engine developed by a German engineer, Felix Wankel. The motor has only three moving parts. An axe runs through the block and two rotors. The Wankel engine converts the combustion pressure directly into rotary motion. 
So there's no energy lost in converting reciprocating movement into rotational movement like in a regular four-stroke gasoline engine. It is hailed by many as the next major step in automobile design. But it's not long before people realize there's a problem. The stress of the movement causes the apex seals to fail. The result is an unreliable motor with terrible fuel economy. In fact, this engine eventually results in the demise of NSU, the company that invented it. Suniji believes he can make the rotary engine work. He enters into a technical partnership with NSU and looks at the right man to work on the engine. Of course, he turns to the engineer in the company who has proved his worth in developing the K360 and R360 vehicles. That man is Kenichi Yamamoto. Suniji puts him in charge of the Rotary Engine Research Division. This division consists of 47 specially picked engineers, designers, and material scientists. They were later become known as the 47 Ronin, named after the legendary 18th century samurai outcasts. It isn't an easy time for Mazda. The company is left off the list of designated car makers. The Japanese Ministry of International Trade and Industry specifies Toyota, Nissan, and Isuzu as the nation's car makers, but it excludes Mazda. This means Mazda won't get any government support, which makes it impossible to get financial aid. But Suniji and Kenichi are determined that Mazda will stand for engineering ingenuity and hopeful that the rotary engine will save the company. It's now 1963. Mazda debuts the Cosmo concept car with its rotary engine at the Tokyo Motor Show. It's an important car for Mazda. Not only is it the first production car to be powered by a two-disc rotary engine, it also begins a tradition of innovation, of embracing unique technology and an unconventional approach that is found in the DNA of the brand today. It is a forerunner of legendary models like Mazda RX-7 and MX-5. It's a sleek and stylish two-person car built for driving pleasure. It's also the second most expensive car in the Japanese market, just behind the Toyota 2000 GT. The world is impressed. News headlines wonder if Mazda will reshape the automotive industry. The Ministry of International Trade and Industry decides to back Mazda. The future is secure. But the real work is still to be done. They still need to get the rotary engine to work. The team works on the engine for years and encounters many problems and setbacks. The biggest problem is chatter marks on the inner wall of the rotor housing. These marks always appear after a certain period of operation. Mazda engineers call them nail marks of the devil. Finally, they have a breakthrough. They create seals made of high strength carbon infused with aluminum. The Cosmo 110S sports car is released. The rotary engine defines Mazda's identity. It is used in everything from family cars to pickup trucks. It's even used in a bus. Mazda improves the fuel consumption by 40% and cleans up its emissions so that it passes the American Clean Air Act of 1970. So how exactly does a rotary engine work and what makes it different to a traditional engine? In a traditional engine, air and fuel are sucked into the cylinder where they're compressed. A spark ignites the mixture which creates an explosion that forces the pistons down, which causes the crankshaft to turn. In a rotary engine, the stages are the same, but the way it does it is different. You still get intake, compression, ignition, and exhaust, but there are no cylinders or pistons. The stages are created by a rotor, which does the work, rotating in such a way that it allows all these stages to occur. When the rotor spins, it creates a vacuum over the intake port, which sucks the air and fuel into the chamber. As it rotates, it covers the intake port and compresses the air and fuel. Then the spark plug fires, forcing the rotor around further until it reaches the exhaust port and expels the burnt air and fuel. The concept of a rotor engine is superior to a piston engine in that there are fewer moving parts. This means there should be less wear and tear and should be more reliable. Notice I say should. We'll get to that shortly. The design means rotary engines are extremely compact. They're also smoother, have the ability to rev higher and make more power. It all sounds great in theory. Now let's talk about the downsides. Rotary engines use a lot of oil, even with improved seals. They still break a lot, which means the car loses compression as we know high compression makes more efficient engines. Because the chamber is large, more air and fuel isn't burnt. This means lower fuel efficiency and higher emissions. Rotary engines on paper look like a good design, but in reality they're not as efficient. But while they may not be as efficient, the engines perform for Mazda. Sales increase, then everything changes. It's 1973, oil prices soar around the world. 
This makes rotary engines way more expensive to run since they need more gasoline than standard engines. Mazda verge on the edge of collapsing. Must they abandon the rotary engine in order to survive? If you like this episode, please support us by sharing this video.